Good morning, and uh, I am hosting in place of uh, Chris today or um, CES meeting um, on the agenda. I believe we have interactions between Box uh, and Jason and Two String uh, and the interactions with virtualization and compartments. Um, Nicolo, you put the item on the agenda, so I'll let you go. Okay, so yes, we were discussing this on GitHub with Matthew. Um, so the like we found a problem that we didn't consider before so we moved uh the unbox method from the box prototype to the to the box constructor as a static method so that compartments can replace uh the box constructor and the unbox static method per compartment and provide a different unbox function however uh we found two other ways that could observe the contents of a box. And one is passing uh, a box to the string function uh, because that function like currently uh, invokes to string on the box contents. And so we might need to change that. And the other one is json.stringify, which currently uh, like unwraps boxes and stringifies their contents. However, this gives a way, first of all, to observe the contents of the box in the resulting string. And most importantly, if you pass a replacer to the json.stringify function, you could like steal the, the contents of the box without relying on the box.unbox function. And so we also need to, to change that. So Nic Nicola, let me just, um... Uh, uh, Matthew explained this to me, and I feel very confused. Um, the rationale for introducing boxes is we didn't want to just have a transparent transition from uh, records and tuples to objects. We wanted to put a barrier in there that was explicitly non-transparent. Um, and uh, then furthermore, um, we decided that uh, uh, it would not work across realms. Uh, so it was not just explicitly non-transparent, it was opaque without permission. Uh, and that, that's, that's a consistent perspective, but, for, but that perspective is incompatible with to string or JSON stringify, uh, just trying to pretend like things are transparent again. Uh, the other side, I mean, the, 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 uh, the other, I mean, extremes are simple. Things between extremes generally tend to get messy and confusing. Uh, the other extreme is uh, if we want things to be transparent, let's say to two string or JSON stringify, then why not just have them be transparent and get rid of the box concept completely? Um, and the only intermediate thing that I can think of that's coherent is that, um, uh, we've got box there as a um, as a non-transparency, but not as a barrier. Uh, in which case, it should it should work across realms, not just within a realm. It should it should work unconditionally. Uh, and you know, and and for each of these things, there are objections. But the point. So I'm not saying that I'm advocating any particular one of these. What I'm saying is. I don't find any stance other than those three to be coherent. And I think that the, the, the thing that, that I'm, I'm currently hearing uh, just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, so I agree with your, like, with your point of view. I personally see boxes as something that should be fully like uh, opaque, like non-transparent. Uh, the reason that we currently unwrap boxes in JSON.stringify is that uh, we found is that it makes it way easier to like often, for example, you might stringify something to send that to uh, another program and the program does not really care about the difference between like the mutable part and not mutable part or for no, example. So so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry to interrupt, but just if the other program doesn't care about the transition, then probably it doesn't care about the difference between records and tuples on the one hand 
and frozen objects and arrays on the other hand, in which case simply the imposition of a box at the boundary is already an impediment to that program. Uh, I mean, the program that has the record on top of with the box inside uh, might care about the difference. It's just that the, like, when sending this to somewhere, that somewhere might not care about this. So, no, I'm, I'm saying the receiver. The rece if the receiver doesn't care about it, then the receiver probably uh, uh, doesn't want to see a box in the way either. So the way the JSON Stringify unwrapping boxes uh, works currently is that it is fully transparent. It's like the box was never there. Um, same for the way records and tuples are uh, stringified. It's like they are the equivalent uh, object or array, I believe. Um, the, I think one question to ask is, usually you don't send data one way or uh, just one way. Uh, you also receive it. If, if a program is able, is receiving data that doesn't have this information about records, box, and tuple, and then somehow constructs it, it should be able to also explicitly deconstruct it if you need to send it back. Um, so I, I, I agree, like it might be a little bit more, less ergonomic to have to explicitly unbox um, boxes in a, in a serializer or, uh, or something like that. But I can't really imagine a program uh, except something that just want to be able to accept anything regardless of what it is and somehow uh, make a stringified version. Uh, any, any program that handles boxes in the first place will want to be explicit in, in the serialization. Yeah, the whole point of boxes is to make things non-transparent, is to provide an, ex, you know, is to enforce that there's an explicit step needed to get from the, from the box to the box content. So I think, I mean, my main concern here is simply that we have a clear conceptual notion of what a box is and what purpose it's supposed to serve. And then we stay true to whatever that uh, abstract notion is throughout all the details of the design. Okay, so I guess what the proposal, like the, what the proposal is currently, like the direction we're currently moving it is that boxes are just uh, like non-transparent things put in the structure, like as if they were just symbols. And so they should not be unwrapped by JSON of stringify and they should not be like stringified nicely by the string function constructor. Correct. Um, and then it, with, and, and with json.stringify, there's a way for somebody to get the effect if they want it, which is a replacer that where the replacer, the replacer can use the box constructor if it wants to unwrap a box when it encounters it. Um, but it should, but it should definitely not be the default. Yeah. So it would be similarly to how big in our country handled that if like if you stringify begin the throws, unless you pass a replacer that transforms it to something else. Yes. Yep, yep. I, th I think at our May, when we first talked about JSON stringify, I think the, the main use case was around just the common thing of developers doing JSON stringify if they're debugging in a place without like an interactive console. So it was like, I don't think we had great use cases for it apart from it just being a really quick shorthand for debugging something you know rather than making them also have to pass in the replacer just in terms of the like aren't boxes supposed to be this explicit boundary it's like they're an explicit boundary but if someone's debugging maybe it would be nice that they can just if they've got a little debug function that just dumps something to the console that will still work so i think that that was the reasoning behind it rather than thinking boxes of this explicit boundary except then in this case they're for some reason not okay for the node console there is this weird util thing that peers into the insides of objects in magic ways uh and um it's you know it's outside the javascript spec it's actually something that 
that is a little offensive because it's doing things that can't be done in JavaScript, but it's not, but, it, but it's there. Uh, and having it peer into boxes uh, is, no, is, is no more of a problem than having you know, a, a, an interactive debugger peer into boxes. Right. I mean, to, we actually talked about this recently. Like, for example, you can observe the set of things in a weak map in the Chrome console, right? Like, there's no reason why debug tools cannot reach past that member, like, through that barrier. Right. Um, and in terms of, um, like, making it easy, like, I think the, the argument against it might be that um, people will end up writing lots of code that like lots of revivers that will like put things in or uh, sorry, replacers that take things out of boxes. Uh, but I could easily see popular user lane libraries that implement like a very simple uh, replacer function that people use. Those don't have to be like, that's easily implementable in user land and can yeah. be a simple it, package. Also, we should be not, we should not be under any illusions that imposing the box non-transparency step, whether we made a special case for two string or and JSON or not, what we're saying is for everything other than the, the special places we made an exception, we're going to cause developers to write a lot of code to get through a, a purposely non-transparent boundary that, that uh, where, where currently with, with frozen objects and arrays containing things, there is no such boundary. So the whole point of this is to, is, is to force developers to write new code to traverse the boundary. And if we're not happy with that, we shouldn't be happy with box. Plus one, yeah. I was gonna say, um, at the risk of opening a can of worms and in, in, in perhaps making Mark scream, um, uh, if, if the issue is that you need a, a special replacer, uh, perhaps the box class itself could provide that replacer as a thing that you would just toss in when you call JSON that string of boxes. We certainly could. Yeah. I would be interested to see how much demand there is for it, especially if there's like, you know, a popular NPM package that comes out of this that like people like to use and then the community effect takes over. But that could also, I think that it would be certainly easy to add later as well, just as a new property on the constructor. Um, so I don't, because we, we were talking about the, the other place that function might be useful is the other thing we were talking about with. If but unbox isn't on the prototype, it means you can't just chain. Oh, I'm accessing some deep record. Oh, now I've got to a box. I need. I just need to call unbox. If it's a static thing, I have to do. I either have to extract the box out first, and now do box dot unbox. You know, I can't just inline it in one expression as easily. Right. And if, if we have, I say if you. You can, like if the pipeline proposal goes forwards, you can kind of still get a similar thing where I can, I can have record dot this dot this dot this dot this right the way deep down. Oh, and now I've got to a box. Pipe that into box unbox, but then that can be annoying if box is sometimes not undefined. So it'd be another like a function that takes a value, checks if it's a box. If it is a box, it unboxes it. You could use that both when you're like deeply accessing something and also pass it to JSON uh, stringify replacer. It would work in both situations. So I, I think no matter what, you're not never gonna be able to have a prototype method uh, that, that works because if you want uh, for a replacer to do it properly, uh, if you want to do if you want to restore transparency with a replacer, you have to actually um, uh, deeply unbox because you might have a box of box of box of box. Uh, so if you return another box, that's just not going to help. Uh, your replacer has to remove every box uh, on, on the path to something useful. Um, yes, we can implement, we can provide a new utility function for that, but no matter what, that the prototype wouldn't be where it should live. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. These utility things, I think they could have, I can see them popping up and being useful in other places, whether it's like a utility that, if you have a box of a box of a box of a box, it will just unbox all of them. Or if you pass a thing that isn't a box, it just goes, that is the equivalent. You know, it, it unboxes n boxes. So if you give it something that isn't a box, then it's already unboxed. If you give it a box of a box of a box of a box, you know, it just unboxes all the way through. I can see that being something that if there's high enough demand, you could add in the future and it would be like a useful thing that people would probably want a lot. 
I mean, that is only useful if people want to transparently unbox the box and, 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 not, and remove them from uh, serialization. Uh, for example, that is clearly something we personally wouldn't want to do at Agoric. Uh, we, want to want, we would want to tag them uh, specifically. Uh, and in that case, recursively, is, it, it doesn't help. It, it, you don't need it. So it's really dependent on the use case. And, and that's why like, I don't think we should try to add that to the language uh, uh, right away. Right. That's I, I think that that is a prime case for something we could add later. It certainly doesn't need to be part of the original proposal. Good. And um, by the way, like because of how compartments clone the box function, we will be able to add new static function later without introducing like communication channel in like compartments implementation that will support box, but not these new functions, right? Yes. Okay. Every intrinsic, including nested ones, are um, specifically um, allow listed. Okay. So I guess this is all for this topic. Uh, the the conclusion is to not transparently support it, and we will figure out something similar to how to stringify a box, like what is the exact string that will be returned it, but it will not depend on the box content. Excellent. Uh, should it be silently ignored or should it throw a typer like uh, begins? I prefer to <laughs> typer like begins, uh, <laughs> but I I would personally be fine with either. Yeah, I strongly I'm, prefer throwing. I, I'm fine with either. Let me just mention that most of the precedent in JSON Stringify um, uh, is uh, to silently ignore things. Um, if you try to uh, stringify a symbol, you just get undefined. Uh, if you uh, try to uh, stringify something, which some of the, uh, um, you know, in which there are uh, symbol named properties or non enumerable properties or inherited properties, all of or those functions. are ignored. Functions um, are ignored as well. And functions are ignored, that's right. So there's a, a tremendous number of things that, you know, sort of the general style of JSON Stringify is to just ignore anything that it's not happy with. And big int is really an exception to the general rule. That said, I like the exception better than the general rule, so I'm happy either way. I will try looking for the notes to why I begin to throw. Um, one final question. If you attach data onto the box value itself, like a property, I guess those would be dropped if it unwraps automatically? Uh, box are primitives, so you cannot attach. Oh, never mind. Them. Yeah, and, and I believe that would be the same as attaching uh, something to a box version of a primitive, so uh, a uh, number instance. Uh, I believe that's dropped as well because it's automatically uh, unwrapped. Yeah. And by the way, box in his in Matthew's sentence was the, the object wrapper, not the, the new box. Yeah, a wrapped box, a box with a bow tie on it. Yeah. Should we bike shed the name box? I, it's, it, it, I have to be honest, it, it was something that irked me since the beginning and I didn't want to bring it up, but since has, it's been brought up by other people, like I, uh, Box is extremely confusing to me. Yeah, so I, sorry, okay. I think most JavaScript developers do not really think about object wrappers for primitives. So I think that this is a problem that we have, but that most people do not have. It's However, um, we are open to changing the name, like if we find something short and descriptive. I, my problem was not actually with any uh, concept in JavaScript. It came from uh, C Sharp and uh, things like that, where other languages have the concept of box uh, primitives. Um, so it's not specific to JavaScript. It's, it's a common concept in programming. Um, yeah, and it's a, and 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 because I, so I'll, I'll go ahead and say I'm confused by it as well because it's not just a common concept in programming; it's a concept that already exists in JavaScript, right? If you have a um, uh, a, a box and you say object open paren the box close paren, then what you've got is a boxed box, 
um, uh, you know, the, the object wrap for all the primitives, we've got object wrappers already in JavaScript. The universal term for that across programming languages uh, is boxing. So uh, I will say, I, I don't want to bike shed it here, but I do want to encourage this proposal to bike shed it and hopefully choose a different name before this goes forward. Yeah. Um, I think the open monthly records and tables call will be like a good place to start discussing about this with people who might actually like with people outside of this group uh, who might have like ideas about the a possible name. Okay. Oh, sorry for the interlude. Um, I also assume uh, that to string would just return a uh, box open close parenthesis. Yeah, probably something like that. Um, great. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to discuss? I had a curiosity. Uh, I'm sorry, I think you might have talked about it last week, but I was struggling to keep up as usual. Um, just the, the use case around wanting, if boxes can pass callable boundaries um, and they can't be unboxed cross realm, but they can if they, and boxes can contain primitives. So if all of those things are given, why we would then still allow a box containing a primitive to be unwrapped. I can see that it doesn't carry the security implications, yeah. but um, I couldn't see like, um, in my mind, you could still implement a membrane if um, if you couldn't unwrap it, but I was also struggling right. to keep up. I was not aware of this exception, actually. It seems yeah, like I, uh, Mark, I, that's something I realized, and I, I need to think about this again. Um, so actually, here's here's the problem. So what I, what I said is, if you have a box of primitive, um, it ha doesn't carry the realm uh, identity with it. So if you send the box of primitive from one realm to another, you can actually uh, unbox it on uh, in the other realm. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, objects don't carry a realm either. There's no realm internal slot in an object. So, so, so we have to we have to account for it as the box containing the realm. Yeah, exactly. So the box remember the box remembers uh, the realm and uh, checks that the realm is the same uh, if the content of the box is an object only. Wow. Um, <laughs> the it's 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 a bit obscure, uh, but I believe there is no other way uh, to make to make it really work. Uh, if you check the realm regardless of the content, um, that means you cannot uh, you have to remap a box regardless of the content uh, when you make it go through the uh, the membrane. The, the that mapping is expensive. Uh, however, the problem is that if you have a record um, of purely boxes of primitives that doesn't contain any objects anywhere, um, at that point you were, you cannot put it in a weak map to remember that mapping. So that means if you have a uh, a record tuple that contains boxes, but that those boxes none of them contain an object, you have to do an expensive mapping. And, and you can't remember, you can memoize the results of that, uh, that operation. So every time you see that record again, you have to uh, redo that mapping over and over and over again. Um, similarly, uh, and, and going both directions. I see. Um, so the, I, 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 I see that that's a problem. Um, the, uh, the, the security problem with the current suggestion is that as soon as you get used to uh, boxes hide their contents from those who don't have the box constructor, then you put a secret string in the box thinking that the box will hide it from those who don't have that box constructor. And then you're surprised that the secret got revealed. So as soon as you introduce a, um, 
a hiding mechanism to have it only hide some things uh, is quite hazardous. Um, there, there is also the, a few other things. One, records are expensive anyway, in the depending on how engines implement these things, of course, but assuming naive implementations because engines haven't had the time to optimize things or haven't had the motivation to just doing like an equality check. So if I'm passing a record to the other side of the realm, as soon as someone does an equality check on that, that quality checks possibly going to have to like deeply traverse that whole thing. So th the general expectation of if you're dealing with deep records is that some operations are costly. So the fact that the membrane thing would potentially be costly if you, you're having to traverse it, it's like that traversal is something you're probably going to have to do at some point anyway in your program. But it's a lot more expensive. It's traverse it, take every box you encounter and, uh, and, and send information about how to recreate another box with the same, uh, with that content on the other side. Uh, and so you have to do that mapping over and over every time you cross the boundary. Only, you only need to send across the boxes that you need to send you over need... the boxes and then uh, you need to send over the, the record. And then when you get it on the other side, you need to reconstruct a new record with different boxes. What is the reason why we want boxes to be able to contain uh, primitives? I, I don't want to, but people do. <laughs> that That's one of the reason I, it, it's a, it makes boxes a lot harder to uh, to deal with. Uh, again, that that's a problem that would go away if uh, if we only allowed objects in, in boxes. Okay. Well, so what are, so what, are, what are the reasons that other people then want to put primitives in boxes? The the argument is that if box can contain any value, so it's just box of t, potentially boxes of boxes of boxes then it becomes a generic container type in the language that could have other use cases yet unimagined. So like rather than seeing them purely as something, this is not me saying that, I'm just repeating what I've read online. The, um, rather than purely seeing them as the thing that gives you an escape hatch in records and tuples, where in that case, it, the only reason you would possibly really want it is because you're storing a non-primitive. If you remove that restriction, they become a type that could have other use cases in other domains. That's does my anybody, understanding of it. Does anybody have an example of a use of it in another domain? Yes. So for example, Jordan uh, suggested uh, um, array.find-like function, which can differentiate the result between uh, like not found and found undefined by using box as if it was like a maybe type and you return undefined if you didn't find anything and box of undefined if you found undefined there. And other use cases that have... I'm, 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 I'm sorry, okay, just, I mean, does anybody here find that suggestion not to be silly? I mean, I don't find it to be silly because dealing with when you have promises that return undefined is kind of a pain sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's there, given the, the non-transparency of boxes, there's, you know, we've got a zillion different ways to, um, to build a non-transparent container around something uh, in order to differentiate it. The, the fact that we can't have uh, a promise for a promise is the, the classic case of that. Promises are only promises for non-venables. So if you want to effectively get a promise for T, where T is anything, then you instead have a promise for a container of T with many different kinds of containers having been used, such as a singleton array. If you just say, here's a promise for a singleton array of T. Uh, singleton arrays are never promises. Uh, so now you effectively have a, um, you know, you, you've got an encoding. Um, uh, I will admit that is my go-to monad in the language is an array with one value because then I have map, flat map, yeah. you know, empty, null. It is a nice little pattern. 
I yeah, think but... the argument against that was that at least it would be something standard in a language. Um, so multiple libraries could agree on a, on on the shape of the container. Yeah, it could become old. a de facto standard generic container. So can, can we just agree now on singleton arrays being that the container for that purpose? I mean, that's a purpose for promise, maybe. Why, why isn't it a purpose for find? Well, what if your, your content is supposed to be an array in the first place? How do you, differ, do you differentiate it? Because if you're always going to take the result and put a singleton array around it, uh, then if the actual result was a singleton array, you'd have a singleton array uh, wrapping a singleton array. And right. if you're not happy with that, then you shouldn't be happy with a box containing a box. Well, right. it's the same problem. I'd need to think on it a little. Dynamic import is the nightmare case, but I don't think either of those would solve needing a maybe type on dynamic import that doesn't auto then. But, the way was, sorry. But I do think it would be very useful if now that import does have a second argument in its dynamic form, if there was a way to invoke it that auto wrapped the result rather than performing recursive thens. The way another use case, which was brought up, uh, which I found more like convincing was that whenever you use records and, records and tuples to build a, like a structure that potentially accepts parts from the outside. For example, if you have a virtual DOM library based on records and tuples where you have like props coming from the outside, you, you probably would want to just put the box to contain the, the, those properties without really caring about what those properties are. And mm -hmm. So like if box accept anything, it will just work. Yeah, semantic separation between um, system data and user data. So I, I still, I, so, so what is the advantage of box for this over singleton array? Uh, it's that you cannot put the singleton array inside of records and tuples. And if you put a box containing a singleton array, containing a primitive, then you kind of break the equality rules for records and tuples. I, I, th I think I'm not understanding what the use case is. Why, what is it that we're putting inside a box? User data. User data that is primitive data or user data that, that is? That we don't want to care, have to care about. Uh, a library might get user data and it wants to record it uh, inside an immutable structure, but it doesn't want to uh, bother about what type of data that is. It just wants to put it in a box and uh, save it in, in, in its okay. immutable structure. So if it doesn't, uh, um, so if the data are objects, then they have unique identity. So we don't care that we're not doing a deep equality by structure of the user data if the user data is objects. So in that case, we're still not breaking anything. We put it inside a singleton array inside a box. But if, if you're getting that same identity, uh, now if, uh, if you create a new uh, singleton array every time you've lost that identity, uh, that equality, the, uh, and there's a lot of assumptions here about um, you're, you're handling user data opaquely, you're putting it inside a record or tuple, and you care about the identities inside the user data? Yeah, that actually is fairly common for VDOM type use cases. I mean, it is still doable, right? It just, it means the code has to do their own thing of some way where they represent, this is the user data. So they've got, you know, a record that has a key, metadata, user data, and then they know the thing there will either be a box if 
if it's a box, then it's because the person gave them something that couldn't be stored in a box. Or if it's not a box, then it's a primitive because they gave us a primitive or, you know, like they can still get around it. It just means they're going to have to write more code to make sure they're tracking what's going there. The advantage of right. box just storing anything means that code is, is one line. So it's not, it's not like a capability. It's a, an ergonomics thing. This all comes, this all seems like it comes back immediately to wanting to use box as a generic single item container, because if you want, like in that case, like you just mentioned, it seems possible to just not use boxes. But if you care about using boxes as a generic delineation of like of a container, then but that it, it just seems it seems counter to the now more solidified principles behind lack of transparency through a box because mm -hmm. a container doesn't impl explicitly mean that it's like opaque, right? It just means that it's a container. Right. So it seems like it's not solving the same problems. Yep. Ultimately, I I don't really care um, whether they store primitives or not, but it seems kind of gross. In my head, like a box is a reference to an object. Like it, it's more of like a, in my head, a box is like a reification of the pointer to the object. Uh, so it doesn't make sense in my head to have a reification to a pointer to a string that doesn't exist. Like it doesn't, but I get it, I guess. Yeah, I think no one in the champions team is like enthusiastic about primitives in boxes, but we are mostly trying to reflect the feedback that we get on GitHub. Okay, so uh, so I'll just contribute that my feedback on the other side to, uh, now you've got feedback on both sides. Okay, yes, thanks. Uh, the, the, deline the generic delineation between system data and user data, that example did somewhat convince me as a making box a generic uh, container that you have to have the, you have to unbox to look at, at what it is, but you, you just, don't care about what's in there. Uh, and, and I agree, thinking about it now, it does completely go against um, being able to pass that box and being able to unbox it in another realm. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> An argument could be made that we could disallow, well, it depends on how the patterns end up eking out, but an argument could be made that you could disallow primitives now and come to a conclusion later. But if people start deciding to throw things in boxes to find out if they're primitives, then that becomes a problem. Also, just don't do that. Don't stop. There's enough current ways to find out if something's a primitive that uh... I think that there's not going to be temptation to start using boxes just to test if something's a primitive. You're probably right, but I'm still nervous anyway. But yeah, I mean, we we could also take the route of well, allow, uh, allow, allow later. So there are many there are many ways to do that, Mark, but not many of them are very quick. The uh, the shortest code wise is. Uh, capital object of X triple equal X. And the quickest is uh, type of X is either um, uh, object or function. Right, but, but, and it, it, it doing, but doing a, a try catch on a box will be a lot faster than both of those, I, I believe. Oh, if it froze, right? Right now writing a try catch is a little bit annoying because you've got a there's, there's no try catch isn't like a, an expression Only works in statement position yeah this yeah. is yeah now you're yeah. talking about wrapping it in another function call now you've got an indirection it doesn't yeah. seem very ergonomic in comparison yeah and so throwing is slow in general like throwing much slower than a function call or like a type of check yeah and on some engines i think maybe today all engines uh, a try catch even if the try block doesn't throw is not free yeah I believe it's de-optimized. 
Um, anyway, I uh, I can just hear the pushback we're going to get if we're saying no primitives in uh, in boxes. Okay. Well, I mean, I just like I said, I'm registering yep. pushback if we say primitives are in boxes. So now we have pushback on both sides, and now we can uh, try to figure out what makes sense. Yeah. And um, by the way, I think that. So like Matthew mentioned multiple times that the problem is that boxes with primitives cannot be put in weak maps. Uh, however, I think that boxes with primitives passed across realms would be like a rare, like a not common thing. And so like, even if in this edge case, it will be slower because it needs to, to like redo all the work every time, it would still be like rare to do it. Why do you believe it would be rare? Can, can, you, can you say that again, Nicolo? Like, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, so like, I believe that primitives in boxes would still not be that common, uh, mostly because uh, like the, the main reason for boxes is to put objects there, like to put objects in represent tuples, and that's how they, I think that will be used the most. And so even if the primitive case is lower, that might be okay. It's it's a lot more slower, and and I'm I'm really worried that uh, there's just no way to uh, like if, if you allow it to happen, people will construct records with boxes and no objects in them. Yeah, I I I feel like that the the issue will, will, will not be that you intentionally put something in a box that is a primitive value. It's unintentionally creating boxes around primitive values that you're receiving and you're throwing a box around or something like that. Um, so accidentally boxing primitive values, I would say. I still don't fully get this, the slowdown. So like if engines have, so I'm constructing a record as I construct that record, you know, I'm putting my key values in. Every time, every time I see a value, I can t tell at creation time if I'm that value is primitive or not. And effectively, you know, like then have a flag on my resulting object, which is just the, you know, the bitwise or flag of my contents. You know, if if none of my contents have the flag, I'm an object. Yeah. Then my flag is also. I'm not an object. So then when you get a record or tuple, and then you say, you know, there's an API, if there was an API that just says, are you deeply primitive? That <laughs> would be 01, just checking that flag because it's being pre-computed. And then you mm -hmm. can just pass the whole thing across to the other side because it's deeply immutable. But you can't just pass the whole thing across. That's the main issue. If if you if we don't allow um, boxes of primitives to be unboxed on the other side, you have to look, find all the boxes uh, in the sending realm, send the content of the boxes to the other realm, and then send the record. And then when you get the record on the other side, you have to identify all those places where you have those mm -hmm. uh, boxes and replace them by other boxes with the content that you received. Yep. What, what, why, I still can't. Because you, you can't, if you, if you receive a, a record that has a box in it with a primitive, you can't unbox it, which, is, which means you can't use it. If you can't use it on the other side, it's, well, it's useless. You have to provide a record to the program that the program can actually use for, that means a record that, uh, that has a box of the original contents, but it's a different box because now that box is uh, flagged by uh, tagged by the realm. Okay, good. So. Matthew, let me let me make sure I'm understanding. You're talking about if you build a membrane on top of the callable boundary. You're not suggesting mm -hmm. the callable yes. boundary itself needs to do this. Yes, correct. Okay, good. It's it's Best. the membrane that lives on top of the callable boundary that has to do all that work, and it can't remember the work it does because it's not allowed to put those in in weak maps. And so, so uh, Matthew, just just to add, uh, maybe maybe I can help to clarify here. So more so, the approach that you're describing is the same that you're describing the in the in the in the gist, uh, which is a, a, a 
the work of transferring the boxes to the other side needs to happen ahead of time. So it's ahead of time transferring of values that then once you receive the record, you can replace. Uh, a, a, the, the one that we're using right now or experimenting with is a, a, a more uh, a, a just in time uh, the decision making on the boxes. Basically, a, one side of the membrane give you a record. Uh, the other side receive the record and says, you have boxes, let me look through them. Uh, when I find one of those boxes, I ask the other side, hey, I got this record that I cannot open. Can you help me to provide the proxy of the content of this box? Because I cannot open it. You can open it, you can open it and send me back the, the thing that I need in order for me to create a new box and replace it. So it's a kind of a, a, a single loop. So if, if, we, if, if we get to have some, something like a replace, like a, imagine that you have a method that you, given a record, you have a, a, a replace um, or map, it's, it's basically a map. So you do a map, so it's a single, it's a single uh, traversal because you just go one by one, every record that you find that it happens to be a box, you ask the other side, give me the thing, I create a new box on my side with the proxy of the, thing that is in the box and um, replace the existing one. And the result of that is a new record. So, uh, and so it seems a little bit more simple, but also uh, faster because you only do one, one pass. But it's, it's basically the same problem you have. I mean, that, that's why I posited you need a helper like a map, but regardless whether you do it, whether you push the content of the box ahead of time or you query it when you get it, uh, get it on the other side, no matter what, you have to do that deep mapping before you can give the record to the yeah, program yeah, yeah. because uh, of the identity that that record at that point carries. Um, you, it's not records unlike objects. Uh, you can't you can't build a, a lazy proxy on top of it. You have yeah, to yeah, deeply yeah. Uh, fill the holes. Uh, and even if the program is not going to actually use the content of the boxes, even if they're never going to reach for those boxes, you have to uh, eagerly uh, do that. Yep. And if you can't remember that result, the fact that you created a new box with another uh, with a map content, uh, if you can't remember that, uh, you have to do it every time. And every time you have to go through the callable boundary to ask for, hey, what is the content of this box? Um, so it's extremely expensive to, to do so, it if you uh, with primitives. So is the key thing that I'm missing that we're saying you want to build a membrane? where I now have two realms that usually if one passes a record of boxes across, you can't open it the other side, but you want to build a membrane that, that allow then you allows to you yeah. to do that. Yep. Yes. So even though in normal JavaScript, that would, you can't do that. that. And people would have to, they would have to pass the box constructor across to the other side and say, if you do any unboxing, you have to use this unbox function because yeah. this is the right. one that has the key, the yeah. membrane, hides that from you but should, why what i thought the idea of a membrane is that it's transparent but this is now not transparent it's, it's like transparent. adding it's, you Actually, cannot, you cannot observe like, you cannot observe that is the, the oh sorry the i guess it's coming from the other side you don't you don't observe it but i mean it's it's not transparent maybe i don't understand the word transparent i thought transparent in that it still feels like i'm using the same language or is it transparent that i don't even know things are cross realm as in like it's as if i was working in one realm that's what the transparency yeah. is. That, is. that is actually a very good point that you brought up. Um, the membrane could potentially provide its own box unbox that you have to use to reach inside the box so that you can just pass uh, the records and tuples without mapping them. And you only map at the unboxing time. Yeah, because um, that's what, that's what non-membrane code will have to do. That's going to be the pattern people need to learn. I didn't quite get that part. As in, so if I'm not using a membrane. I'm I'm just using realms through either you know iframes mm -hmm. or Node VM. Like I'm I'm using realms that aren't anything to do with yeah. membranes. I mm -hmm. need to learn as a JavaScript developer. If that other side unboxes, I have to give them. Either they had to give me their box constructor, so I'm constructing boxes they can use. So we we now share the same the same box constructor and box unbox. 
or vice versa. I have to get right, but that, but, but that's my one. But that's not possible yeah. in a callable membrane. But it, no, well, but it, it, there, it there, could be. Host, hosts could allow it. Like no, no, node could allow it. You, no. you, you can build a, a box on box that goes through the, the membrane at that point. Uh, the, the problem is actually figuring out which realm you need to go through. So if you if you replace box and box uh, or provide a new one, uh, the membrane does that uh, with an implementation that would ask the original realm what the content is and at that point create the proxy uh, lazily. Uh, that, that would actually would work nicely. The problem is that works great uh, if you only have two realms. If you have multiple realms, uh, you the same with an object, you, with something that you can put in weak map, you can remember where that box comes from. Uh, with something that uh, you can put in weak map, you don't know which realm uh, that thing came from. So you somehow have to uh, try all of them before you find uh, yeah. the right. But this is, I guess, the point I'm trying to make is that's yeah. what everyone else is going to have to do anyway. Like that is, if I'm not using a membrane, so if I'm using Node VM to create my realms, I have to even make sure everyone uses the same box and keep or keep a list of boxes. So my I, I fake the box constructor. It has an internal list of boxes that it tries. You know, so I'll have like an a list of n boxes I've been given. And I try each unbox until I succeed. You know, that that's what that's what code's gonna have to do if they don't have a, a membrane. So just just to say that solving is for membrane, this problem still yeah. The performance problem is still there. I want, to, exactly. I, guess I, want, I, want to, I want to introduce an important distinction in the conversation. Uh, there's two forms of transparency uh, that mem that different mem you know there's there's uh, the normal membrane, the historical membrane. Well, the transparency that membranes were designed to provide is exactly what Ashley was talking about, uh, which is that uh, realms separated by a membrane are uh, very similar to re to realms sep not separated by a membrane. That the that the membrane is a very you know membrane between realms is a very good emulation of a realm boundary without the membrane. Um, uh, and then there's the new invention, which is you know very intriguing. That that um, I think this group has spent more time lately on, uh, which is Caridi's near membrane, uh, which where you place it between realms. And uh, it's able to mask the realm boundary and make it appear that the objects from the other realm are actually objects locally here within this realm, which is where the term near comes from. And these are both very interesting, but they're very different kinds of transparency. And I think for this discussion, we need to distinguish them. Thanks, Mark. That's, that definitely explains why I'm getting confused because I hadn't, I hadn't distinguished that there were two things. So I think knowing that there are two things helps me understand why I was getting confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although the, the, the technique related to boxes for both membranes will be pretty much the same. Uh, the, 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 the inter because, the membrane? Because that, that remember that, the identity thing, the, the identity aspect of it, which is, are you an object from this realm or from the other realm? That happens when you're interacting with the proxy, which is the content of the box, but not how you access the content of the box. So that's why I, I feel that the, the, the box conversation doesn't have much of, is, is, is uh, orthogonal to what kind of membrane you're using. I don't, I don't understand. If in, in the if we're just going between realms, not not shadow realm, but just you know the the same same origin iframe realms, uh, then a box I receive from the other realm is just opaque. Uh, I don't see I don't see a proxy for the. Oh, object. I see. I see what you mean. I see what you mean now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so in the regular membrane, you, you're right. In the regular membrane, I should not be able to open the box anyway. Exactly. And to open the box, I need to go through the membrane to get the other side's unboxing capability and then call it. And then I will be able to do so. Yeah, and for the near membrane, 
uh, the, the, there's, you know, with this conversation, we should now distinguish two degrees of near. There's with making it appear like it's within the same realm, but, but different compartments versus making it seem to be within the same realm, within the same compartment. And the reason why that's relevant here is because of the box constructor per compartment. Uh, even if I'm in the same realm, if I don't have access to the box constructor that box this, a box that I get from other code in the same realm is still opaque to me. So um, I think even a near membrane, we should consider it acceptable to preserve opacity over the membrane, to not, to not try to unwrap and put a proxy around it, uh, because that's what would happen even within a single realm between compartments. Yeah, because that, that was the the reason we moved unbox to be a static method, because right? yes. that gives you that compartment. Yeah, so let's not undo all of that progress by having the membrane try to auto unwrap things. Okay, fair. We can, membrane uh, can provide a box to unbox uh, that is, that can unbox from using the unbox from the other uh, realm or compartment. Why should, um, it, why, why should it even provide that? I mean, if it wants to. <laughs> oh, if it wants to, but, but, a, but a transparent near membrane is under no obligation to provide that in order to claim transparency. Fair. Okay. Um, if it wants to, however, it's still, incredibly efficient to implement because for primitives you have to go in and ask every other unbox that you know about um, and try them one by one until you find the right one you can't remember which realm a certain box comes comes from yeah, also so, so one thing for for and, and keep, keep thinking so the mechanics that you're using the two type of membranes is the same. You still have to replace the box. In one case, you replace it with something that is a box that you can access. In the other case, you replace it with a box that you cannot access directly, but indirectly you will be able to access it. Why do you need to replace it? If the, if the box is opaque on the other side, then opacity seems to be adequate. So if in any membrane you replace it because you wanted to replace the box with a box of a, of the proxy, so it, it looks like you have access to you will have right. access. To. Why why do you, if, if the box is opaque on the other side, why do you need to replace it with a box around a proxy? I feel that we're talking about different things. Let me let me see. So I'm talking about the 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 implementation of the membrane um, and whether or not you will be able to have an implementation that serve well both purposes with some configurations obviously some tweaking but the same implementation the same mechanics that i need to get this object from this side to the other side i need to get this record from this side to the other side uh, if it happens to be a record and it has boxes on it i need to do some work um, before i hand it over to the other side or, uh, and part of that work is to replace the boxes with boxes that I can control in some degree. And so when you try to interact with those boxes, they will do one thing or the other. Uh, for a near membrane, when you interact with the boxes, they should be able to allow you to unbox them because you don't see, you don't know that there is another realm. No, for but, you, but it might, what, what, what I was suggesting is that if the ambition we have for near, near membrane is it's only trying to act like same realm, different compartment. If it's not trying to act like same realm, same compartment. Uh, and I think that's a reasonable level of ambition. In that case, we don't need to replace the box. The, replox, the box would be opaque in a different compartment. So the fact that the box is opaque across the membrane means that it's already fine. Okay, I get that. Um... I, I need to think more about this because we, we don't use multiple compartments in the near membrane that we use. Um, uh, so 
So I need I need to think more about this. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely imagine use cases where you want uh, a membrane, a uh, fully transparent membrane, and fully transparent including for uh, for boxes. Yeah, and that's what we have because I, I, I think about what component composition. I have a pattern and a child component. Both of them running in different compartments, kind of thing, like basically different sandboxes, and and the pattern is given the child a, a record that has a box, and the child will receive that record and will be able to access the content of the box. So it's handed over to to the child to use. I, I find this incoherent. The let me give it. Let me give an example of why it's incoherent. Let's say on one side of a near membrane you have compartments A, B, and C. And on the other side of the near membrane, you have compartments D, E, and F. Now, um, you send through a box that has been boxed with the box constructor of one of the three compartments on one side of the membrane. Um, on the other side of the membrane, which of the three compartments should be able to unbox it? It's only the one that reflects the compartment on the other side. And which one is that? My, my, point, my point is that within a realm, you already have multiple compartments and you can have multiple compartments on each side of a near membrane and there's no necessary correspondence between them. So uh, if on, let's say the blue side of the membrane, everything from the red side of the membrane uh, at, you know, acts like it is from as many different compartments on the red side as there were actually were different compartments on the red side, uh, that's the proper emulation of the absence of the membrane is that mm -hmm. if you had three, three, box, three compartments on one side and three compartments on the other side, um, uh, then the, in the absence of the membrane, you still have six compartments. Right. Now, if, you've, if you are emulating six compartments, then the thing that you have on the blue side that represents the box constructor from a red compartment is a proxy for the box constructor. If you use the proxy of the box constructor as if it's a box constructor, everything just works because now the unbox, uh, re the unbox request to the box constructor goes back through the membrane to the red side and the red box constructor succeeds in unboxing the box. Right, yeah. Everything happens at box and unbox mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And, and the, the fact that the identity, the distinct identities of the box constructors are, are preserved across the membrane because box constructors are normal objects. Uh, and that they can be transparently proxy is exactly what you want. Yeah, no, I, I think I understand that. Uh, in our case, we only have one compartment uh, or equivalent to compartments. We don't, we don't have compartments. We only have one constructor, the box constructor on the blue side. And um, when, when you say currently, currently you don't have any box constructor. I mean, uh, once once it lands, uh, we don't right. we don't but, plan but, to introduce the concept of co compartments. Um, it, just let's let's have it land. I mean, since it's something that hasn't landed yet, and compartments haven't landed yet, and they're both in progress, why don't we co-design them so that they're coherent when they play together? I, I, I think my concern is that this is this is the use case of a one-to-one -one mapping uh, between two realms. Where I'm a little bit more concerned is that if you have more like a uh, if you have more like a star topology uh, for your realms, uh, and which is what we have, we have we have multiple sandboxes that reflects the blue side. So basically, you have one blue, multiple reds, and they inter 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 interact with blue through the membrane. And if you want two of these reds to in inter interact between them, that happens through the blue. So you interact with blue and then back to, to red. So the Marshall is in place there. Um, so in that, in that particular case for blue, it only sees one box constructor, one way of unboxing things. But it should see one box constructor per compartment, just like it should see one compartment per compartment. No, there, it doesn't know that there are, there are compartments. Blue doesn't even know that there are compartments there. 
Well, the, the thing is on, e, on each realm might have multiple compartments. The membrane should not com collapse the compartment distinctions because those compartment distinctions are sign semantically significant. Okay, so what, I think we're, well, we have to dig in into this because uh, the, yes. so what, what we have, so what, what we have right now, and, and, and maybe this will help to explain at least what we have right now. If we were to have boxes today, the box constructor inside one of these sandboxes in the red side, the box constructor is a proxy of the blue. So when you're creating a box, you are going to go through the membrane. You're going to have to push the content of the box to the other side via proxy. Yeah. Well, uh, not well. It, it, you have to push it through according to how it passes through the membrane. Yeah, yeah. And, and then on the other side, you create the actual box with the proxy of the thing on the on the red side, and then you return back a record that has a replacement for that box to a thing on the other side. Um, so I'm still fussy about what the problem is, but or what the incoherence that you mentioned is. But I, I had to put some some time on, on thinking about this. Yeah, I. Um, I think we're not going to solve that now, and we are uh, quite a bit over time. Um, so I think our next step is just to think hard about uh, how multiple uh, realms and boxes uh, interact, and what are the semantics and, and, there. And multiple compartments. And multiple compartments. Um, in the meantime, I think the resolution here was uh, we the realm uh, should be checked regardless of the contents, whether it is a uh, an object or a primitive, uh, to keep these semantics of a box that is completely opaque and you need permission to unbox. Uh, so my apologies for pushing in, in, in the wrong direction uh, earlier this week. Um, and I think that is it. I will now stop the recording. <laughs>